Once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages, you are now tuned in to the Prince of Investing. Coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful city and state of Honolulu, Hawaii via Denver, Colorado. But don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. However, you may be catching this across the globe. But I thank you for tuning in if you're catching this live and or if you're catching the playback. So the first thing we're going to do today, we got a very, very special episode today coming up. As you guys and girls can see, we're going to be talking about real estate. And also, this is going to be a very good topic for all of our veterans, all of active duty military, all of our veterans to learn a little bit about their VA loan, VA benefits, purchasing real estate, what's going on in the world of real estate. Is it a good time to buy? Is it a good time to hold? What is the VA loan compared to a conventional loan? Guys and girls, y'all better stay tuned. Y'all know we're always going to have a good episode here coming in uh, at the Prince of Investing. But I've been having a very beautiful day. But I got a very special guest today coming calling in. He's down in Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, he's a mortgage loan officer as well, uh, military, active duty military, you know, military major in the army. And also he's a mortgage loan officer as well. You know, I think he's been military now for about 19, almost coming up on 20 years. And he's helped out, you know, plenty of veterans around the world, get into their first home, sell their homes, refinance, all of the great stuff. So without further ado, let me introduce my guest and my cousin here, Mr. Sean Sutton. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing fine there, Prince. How are you doing? I'm doing outstanding. First of all, I want to say uh, thank you for coming on. And maybe I bought your interview. I mean, not your interview, but your, your bio there a little bit. So if I missed something, kind of tell people about Sean Sutton who haven't seen or heard you. What you got to say? Well, one thing I'll say is that uh, <laughs> that introduction was excellent. <laughs> <laughs> but um, just like you stated, uh, myself... I am uh, currently a member of the uh, United States Army Reserve. Um, did a lot of years there on active duty, and it kind of led me into this field of becoming uh, a mortgage loan officer. So to kind of give a little background on that and my story, because I love to tell this all the time to my clients. Um, myself, I never owned a home before until I actually PCS out here to Hawaii. And that was one of the things that me and my family, we had to come out here and do everything from the perspective of, my goodness, look how much everything costs out here. Mm -hmm. Comparing that back home from where we're from, I'm from Georgia and she's from Florida. And um, we kind of look at each other and it's like, you know what, I think we'll rent for the first year. So it wasn't until we actually got to our home and started noticing our neighbors who are active duty service members, just like we were, family members and so forth. We started to kind of look back and say, you know what, we're paying an awful lot of money to you know, basically pay someone else's mortgage. You know, when you're out here and you're looking at a $3,000 to rent and then you add on additionals for like uh, utilities, lights, waters, that kind of thing, on a monthly scale for your housing costs can easily run you more for $3,500, just depending on exactly what your needs are for your family size. So with all that being said, it led us to kind of reevaluate how our finances were going and it led us to going in and talking with a financial expert, a loan officer, and just seeing what our purchasing power was. And then subsequently, right after that, we were able to go out and purchase our own home and kind of, you know, look at ourselves in a different light and say, you know, we should have done this a long time ago and started getting our hands into the real estate business. Got it. Okay. Now, for the people out there that ask, you know, what's the difference between a VA loan and a conventional mortgage loan? You know, what's the, what's the difference? So when you start talking about a conventional loan, a conventional loan, pretty much anyone can utilize that. Um, from that aspect, because it is open up to everyone, there are different uh, parameters that come along with using a conventional loan. Um, they may have to where they want you to put a certain percentage down. Um, it can be anywhere from like 3% up to 20%. And really what you're trying to do with that, it is opened up. There are some different loan to value percentages that go along with it. But when it comes down to most things, people are looking at in terms of money, like how much money do I have to show up with out of pocket to be able to get this house? So you're trying to avoid things. So like having 20% down will pretty much uh, allow you to dodge things like private mortgage insurance that you have um, with, associated with your loan when you're doing a conventional loan. If you're coming in and you're like most Americans, you may not have that, especially on the housing costs that's ranging half a million dollars, $600,000, maybe you're coming in with 3%. If you wind up coming in with something like that, you may find yourself with private mortgage insurance with on a monthly scale 
could equate to another $300 a month. So it can be rather costly. For those of us who are fortunate enough to be eligible for the VA home loan benefit, however, when you're in a high value market such as Honolulu, Hawaii, you're able to come out and pretty much you have zero down payment. I say pretty much, but is it zero down payment when you come out of, come out of pocket? And that's huge. So that's one of the key advantages there. So there's no private mortgage insurance, as I, I spoke up before. And when the government back loan, things of that nature, interest rates relatively are the lowest. So those are three key areas right there when it comes down to this VA. Um, I simply love about that product. Okay. Now with the VA loan you just spoke about, you know, one of the big things is that you don't have to put anything down. The conventional loan, JP Morgan just came out and said, you're going to have to put 20% down and have a 700 credit score and all of the great stuff like that, right? With the coronavirus is going on, um, you're seeing people lose their jobs. Unemployment numbers came out today. Jobless claims came out to about 30, I think it's like 20 to 30 million in the last four months. That's filed for unemployment and things like that. With the current times that are going on right now, if I'm in the market to buy a home, is it a good time to buy a home or is it a good time to sit on the sidelines? What do you got to say about that? Well, what the recent events that are going on now is pretty much split the market. You have those who are pretty much that can sit back and they have the luxury of being able to go out and make that buy. So to answer that question quickly, it's a good time to buy if you have the ability to buy. If you find yourself in a situation where your employment is in jeopardy, whether you're unemployed, have been laid off, or you've been furloughed, then you pretty much have no choice. You're kind of sitting back and you're making decisions because you're trying to do things to make sure you and your family stay afloat. But for those particular individuals that are out there and have the ability to continue on receiving income, you're going to find it a lot with state employees, government workers. If you're self-employed and you have a central business that's still available to you, right now what you're seeing in the market, there was a lot of volatil volatil um, volatility when it first came out, but it eventually began to settle. So what we call a bit of a roller coaster led to some really extreme swings, but you saw good enough areas where rates were super low and you can take advantage of that. So what I was telling clients, uh, if you're in the market to go out and buy a home, to go out there and actively shop because there will be a window, a time frame to which you'll be able to come back. We can lock your loan at a really low rate that was not there prior to COVID and you could take advantage of the market. Mm. So now what do you have to say to the person that says maybe housing prices are going to come down. I can get a better price, you know? What is the future of housing prices if we see so many people don't have jobs, so many people are, are not working? Uh, what do you have to say for the future of uh, housing prices? You know, should I just wait and get a better price? You know, I think some of these housing prices are going to come down. What do you got to say to that? Well, a lot of that really depends on the market and the area in which you live in. Um, if you're just looking at it in terms of like Hawaii in a sense, here we have a couple of things that kind of protect itself in terms of pricing in this one of the big things I always point out is supply and demand. Because it's an island, we don't have a lot of land. There's a lot of people that come here. It's a tourist destination. So inventory can sometimes sway. Right now it's low. Um, you do have some shoppers out there, a um, pretty good amount. And it really has not deterred a whole lot of people from going out and still actively buying. Now, over the course of the last month or so, sales have gone down. But you still have people who are out there willing to sell their home and trying to uh, you know, move on with life as normal. But those buyers, they haven't deterred them because if you look at terms of a VA loan, um, you still have different entities that are still on island. You have those who are living on base housing. You have those who are coming out of renter agreements. Life's still going on and those individuals are still receiving their paycheck. So the market itself is really advantageous to them. So they're able to go out there with not having so many shoppers out there and able to take advantage of that. In terms of overall house pricing and uh, pricing in the future, I really see that um, it's going to be a long-term effect. So how is COVID going to affect those um, after the fact, when we get back to work? Just because we've gone through this period where you're out of work, there's going to be lingering effects to that. So when individuals start making that money back, or you may have some jobs that may never come back, you got fewer and fewer shoppers. So will that translate into housing uh, dropping? And again, I go back to, it just depends on your area where you live at. For here, I think there'll be a little bit of a dip, but then you're going to see it storm right back. Mm, okay. So now the Federal, the Federal Reserve, 
Uh, the Federal Reserve Chair, Mr. Jerome Powell, he recently in, in February as a way to stimulate the economy going into the uh, current pandemic, he lowered interest rates to an all-time low, uh, like 2018, to like a zero to 2.25. I want to ask you this question. What does interest rates, with the Federal Reserve interest rates, what does that have to do with real estate? So the way I explain this to my clients is when they make those announcements, especially like from a federal level, um, a lot of times it does not equate to what uh, we consider to be the mortgage-backed securities. So when they say that they're going to drop interest rates, they're talking about your credit cards, your small-term loans, or short-term loans, I should say, mm -hmm. smaller loan amounts. And people were giving us a lot of phone calls. You know, they were calling and saying, hey, you know, interest rates are going to be 1% uh, or like there is 0%. Hey, should I come and refinance? And you have to tell them, you know, that's not applying to your mortgages. It's, it's talking about those short-term rates, small loan amounts, things of that nature, your credit cards. You can look at trying to get those, uh, you know, those APRs down and things of that nature. But as it pertains to your mortgage-backed securities and so forth, you just not see that translate over, not until those stimulus went through and then you saw more securities being pumped into the mortgage mark, um, industry and began to kind of settle things down. Okay. Now, when you said that we didn't start seeing that into what part of the stimulus you were saying that we didn't start seeing that or whatnot? Um, I believe it right after the $2.2 trillion uh, took effect, mm -hmm. start to see a little bit of a stability go into it. And then thereafter, I believe there was a secondary that came about. And you start to really see the, the, the industry respond as far as rates. Um, Still, you still have that fluctuation that's still ongoing, but it's not as bad. Mm. Okay. Now, you spoke about, you know, you kind of touched on the topic of refinancing with the lower, lower interest rates or whatnot, right? But now, as we look at the real estate market in general, over the next short term, do you think real estate is destined overall, you know, just speaking of just, uh, I know Hawaii is a different market. But just overall, what do you see in the next six months? Because a lot of people out there saying, hey, Prince, you know, I want to get into the real estate investment trust or I'm looking to get into real estate in some type of capacity. What do you see in the short term within the next six months that you can see real estate is going? Well, I think right now, um, if you're looking just in the short term, um, if you're seeing prices start to drop, I think that's going to be advantageous for those who are looking towards investing. I mean, it's all going to go back again. It's going to be that split. It's going to be those who are going to have the ability to do so and those who are not. So when that divide happens and you have those individuals who, you know, it's going to be a trickle effect. Uh, I, I say again, like with those who have the ability to buy, you also got to look from a seller standpoint, do I want to actually sell my home and put it out there or do I want to wait? So I think you see a dip in terms of, um, you know, depending on what my situation is, I've got to get rid of my property. I may sell it for lower. So it might be advantageous for that person at that time to go in and make that make that buy and get a property that was relatively you know more expensive at a lower uh, price point and take advantage of that. Or you can see um, after the fact, um, again, when you get more folks out there, hey, maybe on, from a seller standpoint, I'm able to go out there and sell my property for uh, for because I got more pretty much more buyers out there. So. Mm -hmm. It's just a very unique situation as it stands right now in terms of the market. It's a lot of unpredictable factors out there. It'll be interesting to see as we move forward. Okay, right here, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to go into a break, but once we get out of this break, we're going to get into the concept of what are some best ways to take some advantages of what COVID-19 has pretty much put America and the world on pause and you know, pretty much hit the reset on the U.S. economy. And what are some ways we can take advantage of that using, you know, with our veterans out there and with our people uh, who may not be veterans or whatnot, what they want to do. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Rusty Kamori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence and finding greatness. I feature a wide range of amazing guests who share valuable insights about how going beyond the lines leads to success in everything you do in life. I'm looking forward to you joining me every Monday at 11 a.m. Aloha.
And we're back here live on the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado, via, you know, the wonderful city and state of Honolulu, Hawaii. And we're getting back into it, talking about real estate investing, going on with this pandemic or whatnot. So now we got our special guest, Mr. Sean Sutton here. You know, he's a, a veteran himself, uh, served in the military. He's a, you know, he's actually he's on reserves right now. And he's down in Honolulu, Hawaii. And we want to talk about right now, what can people be doing to take advantage? People that are in the military, people that got that VA loan, things like that. What should they be doing right now? Because, you know, military really haven't been affected financially so far with the pandemic that's going on. So what should people be doing right now? What's your advice? Well, Prince, that's a great question. And the, the, for those individuals who are fortunate enough to where you're still receiving your income, especially with military families, even to these civilians and so forth, you also got to keep in mind, you're receiving a lot of money that's tax-free, especially like with your BH. So translation, when you're looking to buying a house or willing to take on a mortgage, one key factor that commonly gets left out and everybody's kind of afraid of too is your credit. So mm -hmm. you are able to touch on that. So that's the time right now where you're sitting at home and you're kind of stuck on your quarantine there. you got your kids running around. But pull up that piece of paper, pull up a credit report, do a financial review, kind of sit down and look at, hey, you know what? Right now, all of our expenditures have been cut. We're not driving around as much. We're not going to work. We're not going to lunch. We're not going out to eat as much, not going to the movies. Those are all a little bit of extra money that we use as, you know, out of house expenses that could be going towards paying down debt. Therefore, putting you closer to your goal. If your goal is to be a homeowner, these are the little things you can do to help you save money in the long run because the better your credit score, the better interest rate you receive. Mm. So veterans that are out there and current service members who have it, sit down, review, work on that credit score. Make sure that thing is at its highest possible peak. Also, you're eliminating liabilities out of your paycheck and from the household. You're going to walk out this thing in a better situation you went in. So that's my key advice right there for those individuals who have those means, who are on quarantine right now, you want to take advantage of the situation that's been given to you. That way you're able to go out and then not even wait till after COVID's over, because we've been in it now for a little over a month. Go ahead and proceed and see like, you know what, let's see what we qualify for. And then let's go out and take advantage of the market the way it sits right now, because interest rates are favorable. So right now you can go from anywhere from uh, three and a quarter down to 2.75. It depends on where your FICO sits. And then when we look at what you have in terms of um, liquid assets wise and so forth, even though for VA, you don't need any money down, having something like that just makes you look like a stronger borrower. So every, the ball's in your court, really. Okay. So when you look at liquidity, right? You spoke about having money in the bank. So how much money do I need? How much money do I need? You know, on VA, of course you said I don't have to pay, put anything down. How much money do I need to have for that closing fees, moving fees? How much money would you probably recommend I set to a side? I got my credit score together. How much liquid, how much cash do I need to have? Well, the great thing about the VA, the answer is always going to be zero, right? Mm -hmm. So don't need any money down in terms of getting your home. But I always tell people was you have to factor in your home owning um, expenses because that's something that can be definitely overlooked. Um, so I always say whatever your income is, collect two months of that. Have that as your rainy day fund. Or it could be the honeydew fund. You got a honeydew list. Oftentimes when people come in my office and they have a home that they, they seek, they want to go out and they buy, the first thing that happens when they do find that place, now your mind gets to, hey, I want to outfit this home. I want to go out and get new furniture. I want to do all these little things. It's always good just to have that set to the side to kind of get yourself um, situated. In terms of your closing costs, so your closing costs doesn't have to come out of pocket. That is something to where a lender like myself, uh, no matter who you're going through, if it be the, um, like a mortgage bank, like, my, like the entity that I work for, or if you're going through your local bank to receive a loan, because most places are going to be able to provide the VA product, um, they have an interest rate that's associated with a cost. So whatever your interest rate is, it could come at a buy-down cost, to which you're saying to, to the person that, hey, you know what, you're going to cover your closing costs. But in addition to that, if you want to receive that rate because you like that mortgage payment, you're going to pay this a little bit extra. So if I'm paying 3% because I like what's coming out as far as my monthly mortgage payment, it may come at a cost of uh, $2,500. Mm -hmm. 
then I'm gonna pay all my closing costs and plus the 2,500 and that's gonna be my complete closing costs. Now, if you're coming in there, as like, hey, I just wanna get my home. I don't have any extra money that I wanna spend. Um, I want you to cover all of my closing costs. You may receive a little higher of an interest rate, but all your closing costs will be covered with lender credit. So that'll be associated with that rate for today. And that's how you're able to get your home mm. uh, with the rate that you are satisfied with and not to have an extra expenditure when you go to signing and having to come out of pocket for closing. Allow myself to take care of it. So pretty much I ain't got to pay nothing. I just need to get my credit score right, you know, and just walk in, find a house. Say, we want to say it that simple. <laughs> like, well, we want to have those key elements there and I think it's one of the great things that we do and it, really for any loan officer if you, you're out there you're looking for someone to go and do your lending through, you want to make sure that individual is sitting down with you like a mini financial planner because they're going to all of your personal information they're going to receive and pull your credit score they should walk through that thing with you and tell you line by line what you got going on with your trade lines how can you get it better even if they have a good score is there's no problem with going through that and kind of saying, hey, this is what we're doing. And then when you receive your finances, you have that bank statement, that loan officer is sitting there and they hearing what you want because they're listening. And from that, you're building a budget because sometimes you can qualify, hey, I may qualify for a million dollars. Does not mean I need to spend a million dollars. So no one wants to buy a house that's too much and you know, you and the family are, you're pretty much on bread and water trying to survive. So. Mm. All these little things, you know, are factors, okay? And I think that's very important when you're out there before you make the determination to leap, leap up forth and go and buy a home. You sit down, you have that really good conversation and really plan yourself out. Do what's best to fit your family's needs in the budget and then go forth and make a good decision. Got it. Okay. Now, you do a lot of good stuff down there in Hawaii, right? You know, what do you do down in Hawaii? How people can follow you? What do you, you know, tell me more about you know, I know you do some with webinars and things like that. Can you explain to the people out there, people want some more, Sean said, how can they get in contact with you? How can they follow you? All of the good stuff. Well, a couple of ways. Social media is a very popular platforms out there as far as Instagram, Sean Sutton, LO. Um, it's a way to find me on my professional page. And I have the same thing for uh, Facebook as well. Um, our company prides itself on education. We want to make sure that the veteran, when they step through our door, they come in. You know, they've got questions. They're leaving out smarter than what they came in. So before COVID, we would have our VA home loan uh, seminar, our benefit seminar, uh, twice a month. So pretty much um, every other Thursday. And from that, they learn everything about the VA home loan. It is the history of, it'll teach you how it's advantageous no matter where you go. And particularly, it'll break down um, the Hawaii market. So that's one of the things there. And right now we're offering online, which is, I am so glad is we, we have that. You can reach out anywhere in the world. And it's been really, it is taken off. It's very responsive. People love it, whether they're in Europe, whether they're in uh, Southeast Asia, whether they're in Japan. And then locally we're reach out to our clients because we have fans when they leave Hawaii and they PCS and go other areas. And then they tell their friends about it. So it's really been a blast to kind of see people reach out and see that spider web take place and folks are signing up and learning about this benefit and what they can do with it. Okay. So is there anything you want to leave the, the, uh, the audience, the fans, the people that's catching it live, the people that's going to catch a playback, what, is, what do you want to leave them with? I'm going to leave them with the, the fact that, hey, if you are ever interested in learning about the VA home loan benefit, definitely look us up at Line Mortgage. Um, we have our online uh, seminars that come up again twice a month. We actually have one tonight. Um, platforms like this, the Investor Show with Prince Dykes, mm -hmm. this is wonderful, wonderful. What you put out there and what you give to the people as far as what you provide with your financial aspects. Tune in, keep tuning in, and get all that great advice. And I tell you what, man, I, I just want to say I'm so proud of you in terms of what you've been able to put together. Uh, we out here when you were here so <laughs> that good work man and invite me back on the show I, this is like one of my first opportunities to do this and i'm absolutely enjoying it awesome hopefully you know this leads to more opportunities people following you people uh checking you out people wanting you more you know making you a regular on the show all that good stuff you know i'm always down for uh uh doing whatever i can 
you know, to support, you know, you know, do whatever I can. Cause you know, I, like I said, I always tell people, uh, I, I wasn't able to build it. I didn't do this by myself. I had a lot of support. A lot of people looked out for me. A lot of people felt sorry for me and helped me out. So, you know, I always got to help out other people. So, um, but anyway, I know we got to get out of here. That's our time, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages. I definitely thank y'all for tuning in for another great episode and keeping us coming after you guys. Don't forget to uh, follow us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, whatever app you got, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Pandora. You check us out. You type in, you know, Think Tech Hawaii, the investor show, Prince Dykes, you're going to find us. So until the next video, podcast, cartoon, book, or whatever's crazy, see me do crazy around the globe. Peace, be safe. I'm out. Thank you.